Hello. Welcome to New Tricks the Synth Guy. Today we're going to talk about how I use the Tascam Model 16 mixer slash interface and standalone recorder with my iPad. If you followed me a couple of months ago, I did do a video about searching for the right mixer slash interface slash recorder for my iPad. And it should be there somewhere to watch. I decided to go with the model 16 from Tascam. One of the reason that I went with this is that the 16 model 16 is one of the few mixer that is actually a full interface. What I mean by that is, in this case, we've got 16 inputs into the computer and 14 outputs going out of your computer back into the mixer. So I can actually mix and match uh, playback from some hardware device with what they call, uh, let's move this here so you see better. So what this means is I have the option here of going live, which is live from a synthesizer coming right into it or a microphone, whatever it is. And the second one is PC playback. So it's gonna be coming back from a USB. And the last one is MTR, which is the multi-track recorder, which is the internal of the machine can actually record your 14 tracks plus the mix. That's why they call it 16, because it's 14 tracks plus the mix out inside the internal recorder, which is a Porto Studio recorder. So there is already a, you know, multi-track in this. So this is the full standalone device. It's really something that I find really interesting. And that's why I got to take this one. Now, of course, I can just play back my stuff, record straight into this, take the SD card out and then use it somewhere else. My real question is how does it live with the iPad apps? Does it seize it the way it should be? Because in my view, it should be simple. You should be able to plug it in and have your hardware be seen by the software and just go, I got 16 in, I got 16 out, just make it work. It's not exactly like that, <laughs> sadly, because digital audio and the iOS doesn't have the flexibility or it doesn't seem to be as easy to program as you see on Mac and PC. And I don't know how easy it is, but it seems to be difficult because some apps are fixed to the sample rate of the hardware. So depending if you've got an iPad Pro or M1 or an old iPad or whatever it is that you have, you might have, um, a fixed recording value just because it's linked to that hardware. Of course, when you connect a USB device, it should switch to that, but it's not always the case. And to be very safe about, you know, seeing the hardware, you could actually connect it, you should connect it before you turn on your app. I'll do this test with you guys. I have a gadget. I've got uh, Aurea Pro. I've got Zen Beats. I've got Beatmaker 3. I've got Cubasis 3. I've got Nano Studio 2. Honestly, I want to know, does it actually work with this? And when I say this, can I see the 16 inputs and the 14 outputs? And can I assign it to wherever I want? Because if it happens this way, it means that I can actually use, you know, playback of, I don't know, six different audio track. I see it in my, my model 16. I also play back some of the hardware and I can also take some of the stuff that I send to the mixer through hardware effects, like, like, you know, my screw circuit flip fuzz here, re-recorded back into it. So I could reamp my, or re-distort, whatever using what I have and then send it back in. So this logic is basically just a question of, of I can do this because I've got enough hardware input and outputs to do that. Can I, does it see it? 
So what I'll do now is I'm going to turn on, let's say, Cubasis 3. And a lot of people are using Cubasis 3. Now, does it see it? I'm going to go into Media. I'm going to open. So I've got this playing here. I've got no sound. Oh, and look at the screen here. I've got USB FS mismatch, basically frequency sampling. So it's uh, sampling rate, which is mis mismatch. So I'm going to enter. Uh, what I have here, it's at 44.1, 16 bits. So I'm going to go see in my Cubasis settings. Am I at the right setting? Uh, audio. There's kind of no information about, is it, what it's calibrated to. I'm going to turn it off because I did connect after turning on. So now it's here. It's connected. I'm going to turn back on Cubasis. Three. I'm going to load this. Does it work now? If I press play. It's still mismatch. Enter. Let's actually, I'm going to, I'm going to load another session. Now, to understand how the um, task and model 12, uh, model 16 works, uh, there's no easy way to go into sampling rate and just change it. There's just no way to just go in and just switch. So what you have to do is you have to create songs. And when you create the song, you say that song is 44.1 16 or 44.1 kilohertz, 24 bits or 48 uh, kilohertz, 16 or 48 kilohertz, 24 bits. So I created these four songs. And when I need to switch sample rate and bit rate, I just go in and I go uh, menu I will song and I load, let's say 4816. And I load this. See, right away, I see I've got the signal. It works. So it means that the song that I have in here is a song that is by default 4816 bits. So how do I control this? How do I change this? How do I decide this? When I create media, if I create a new song, new project, do I have any choice here? Okay, there's no control, there's no options, there's no way I can say it's 44 or 48. There's no option. So I am really, I'm really, I'm not sure how to set it up. But what's interesting is if I go back to the song I just had before, I've got this song playing. Now, what's interesting is everything plays back. If you see this here, it plays back here. If I want to see what's coming in, I can go menu meter and I see it only comes in on one and two. All the other ones they have no signal. So it comes on only two inputs. That's it. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna go to see one track. Let's say this track here. I want to see a bigger screen. I'm gonna go routing and stereo output. I want it you see oh here we go. I've got one, two, three, four. So I can send it three, four close this and I press play. You see now, I also have signal on three and four. So now if I want to hear it, I need to turn these things on. I can do PFL, I only hear these. Perfect. So this works right away. I still don't get how you switch between 44 and 48 and if it's even possible because I can't seem to find where you do it in this thing, but it should be able to do it, but it's, I don't know. Okay. So this works and I have access to the input mono or stereo, and I've got access to the 16 of them and the output, it can be mono or stereo. And I actually know this is a stereo track, so I can have 14 outputs. So this works right away off the bat. Everything's there. So I could use this to have 16 and 16 outs. Now, before I continue with the DAWs, I'm gonna show you something that I find really interesting. The mix box from IQ Multimedia is a really powerful interface um, processor. Now again, it's switched to mismatch. So can I switch this? Can I go here, uh, audio setup? I can have 44, 48, 44.1. Enter, or oh, 48. Is it better now? And I set up, you've got, I've got all the 16. Oh, here we go. This is nice. 
Okay, so what it means, if I, I can use one, two, three, four, I can use 16 different, actually eight different outputs to control my eight different rack mount that I have here as the inputs. Same thing for the outputs. Actually, no, I just have two outs left and right. I should see 16 of them. Ah, this is, this is not cool. This is not cool. I want to see all of them. So it means I can send stuff to it and tweak them separately, but they're going to come back in a stereo mix. Hmm. Let's go back here just to verify, because in menu, uh, menu, but menu, menu, you can go and verify that um, system. I want audio, USB audio, I want it to be multi, yeah, multi input. So it is offering multi input. So it is okay. And no, I don't want to initialize. So, okay, there's really not that much of controls here. So that's it. Um, oh, this is not this is not what I wanted. I wanted to have if if I switch this back, can I just like go back to menu, a home no menu, song, forty four point one load, no. So right now it's at forty eight. So it has to be in forty eight. Okay. And still, it only sees two outs. Ah, this is not cool. Can I turn it off? Go back to mix box again. All right, come on. If I go back here, show me audio setup, input, uh, still just two. I wanted to see 16 here. That's what I wanted to see, but I only have one and two. So it's kind of some devices sees the inputs, of course, because you can send all of these into this. But when you go send out from the iPad back into the mixer, it only see two, so one and two, which is kind of a mix out, which is by default what most people need. But if I want to use this as a multiprocessor, at least would like to have, you know, eight different outputs of the racks. So what I did, I can hear it separately. I don't know. I kind of, if I disconnect and reconnect. Yes. So it works. Okay. That's it. Now I have it. Guys, sometimes just don't take for granted that it doesn't work. Try again. Now it works. <gasps> okay. This is so good. So I can send mono inputs to eight different racks. That's what it means. And the eight different racks can output in stereo to my whole thing. So what I could do after that is that I could actually just use this to process eight different signals. This is great. So yeah, okay, it works. But you see, sometimes you need to disconnect, reconnect. Okay, let's do that. So we know that this works. Okay, let's try uh, Nano Studio 2. What do we have with this? When we want to play back and record, we have this little song here. We have something playing. Nope, go back. If we go back here, we see mismatch. Okay, enter, and let's load the other one. Load. Now I'm okay, if I press play now. Okay, so what's, what's happening? Properties, no. Let's go back to here, this thing. Audio output, output here. Hmm. I've got uh, MIDI in, model 16 MIDI. Uh, all MIDI key audio, hardware audio. You see, two channel available. If I disconnect and reconnect, <laughs> I'm going to try that every time. 
try to see if they see it. Now it's, it sees it. So I can send to the one. Okay, if I press play now. So if I send it to three and four, it works with this one now. It works. So what I'm learning right now is if you don't see it, disconnect, reconnect. In this case, it seems to confirm that you have access to the 16 or 14. Now see that there's only 14 outs because when you send it back and actually, yeah, when you send it back, you've got 14. When you send it in to the computer, there's 16 because it's 14 plus the main out. So this also works in and out, 14, 16. This is great. Let's go back now to see uh, Zen Beats. Open this one here. If I press play. And we'll go back to meter, exit, home, meter. Main. PC return, here we go. One and two, it works. Now if I wanna take, uh, I press the, this here. This, if I want to say output to, here you go. There's, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing else. Okay, press stop. Let's go back here. Settings, audio, 44.1. And I only see, I've got all these inputs here, but I only have two outputs. Oh, this is not good. I'm going to disconnect and reconnect. I'm going to go here, disconnect audio and reconnect audio. <sighs> Show me 16. I'm sure I saw it at one point, but it's not stable. It's something like, so right now I, I can send, I can have 16 input, which is still okay. Cause I could record. It means connect all of this and record all of that in real time, multi-track right into my software. And when I mix my stuff, I can just listen to the stereo, but I would like to have at least six outputs to have my mix out plus four that could be sent to processing to, so I can edit them and send them back in. So it's kind of a, a sad news for me. Beatmaker three now, let's try this. Just open any session like this one. Do I have some signal in? Okay, I've got a song. I've got sound right away. What what format am I in now? 44.1, okay. Everything's sent to the same output. Uh, if I go here, no, this is great. Okay, let's, let me show you this. If you press on IO in this one, you see, you can select any of the 16 stereo actually seven different stereo mix out and it creates a mix out dedicated to that so you get your seven and they actually come in in different places here if you go into meters so this is this one is is the mixer is really well thought of because you know one of the reasons i'm doing this is i'm rethinking how i'm going to mix my songs uh because i'm leaving aria pro because it's been a frustrating reality. Um, so I'm looking for other ways. So this is a great way to look into that so I could actually mix my tracks here. Uh, so I'm gonna have to relearn how to do it with this one. So that's one way. Cubasis is also a good option. Uh, Zen Beats, if I don't wanna use the multiple outputs, could also be a good option. So this is really well thought of to go into this and say, I want to have this to the three and four. I want to have this on the five and six. I want to have this on the seven and eight. And then you just assign them to separate outputs physically. And you could s assign more than one to the same. By doing that, they're going to be combined into this volume. So this one and this one, the 
track, uh, I would say, organ, plus the track soltar, this one here, these two will be combined into this volume here. So you're doing a submix. I could actually mix subs or stems that I already have controlled. I like this. I like this. That's it. So first view on how to look at these different software. And I'm guessing that these different DAWs do the same thing for about any interface. Because the logic is that these interfaces are multiple inputs and outputs. And the fact that you can see multiple inputs and outputs are not depending on the hardware itself, unless it's incompatible, but it's all mostly linked to how the software can see easily multiple ins and multiple outputs. Some of them are really well integrated. I hope this is actually useful and it, you have a better idea of what you can do with the Tascam Model 16. I can do another video just on the Model 16 itself. The option you have in there, it's pretty powerful and interesting and it's a standalone recorder. So um, you could just like press record and have your old all your 16 tracks recorded to an SD card right here. And then you have it. You just can take that and play with that. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Make more music. Cheers.